Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Mr Sibic, um, before lunch, we were on the 14th of December. I'm now moving to the 21st of December, and it, it seems as though it was a very busy pre-Christmas period in 1998. It was. Um, let's look at CBO 001 underscore 057, please. Um, this is a document from the Chief Secretary to the Treasury um, suggesting a proposed way forward. Do you remember this at all? Uh, in general terms, yes. And that Chief Secretary to the Treasury, at, as of that date, was Stephen Byers. Um, can we go over to page two, please, which is where we find the passage on the way forward. It's in the second half of that page. Um, so his proposal for the way forward um, was stage one, stabilization. Uh, ministers would agree by the 24th of December to continue the program with a benefit payment card with a firm recommitment to deliver the project on time by all parties. To agree commercial terms with ICL on the basis of the 9th of December offer updated by Keith Todd's letter of the 18th of December um, and various other provisions, but the key one there being to continue with the benefit payment card, uh, and then there being a stage two, uh, which we'll see over the page. And it's the bottom of the page is stage two. Um, by the end of March 1999, with the commercial arrangements redrawn as above, the parties will have an opportunity to see whether the programme can do more to deliver the government's present policy objectives. Ministers will ask the post office to take forward discussions between parties in the context of the PPP envisaged with ICL to explore what more could be done with the agreement of all parties uh, to further the following objectives. And there are various objectives on the page after. Um, essentially, what is being proposed by the Chief Secretary to the Treasury at that stage it is more horizon rather than less horizon. Uh, do you agree with that? Uh, as in to use horizon for future additional purposes? Um, yes, uh, I think it was envisaged from quite an early stage that horizon as it was being developed at that point in time um, needed to be a springboard, if you like, or a platform that could be developed for wider and more modern purposes. Um, and then perhaps we could go to Bayes 0000397, and that is a ministerial submission um, that I believe you drafted on the 21st of December. So again, the same day as that was received from the Chief Secretary to the Treasury. Would you have received the Chief Secretary's uh, document in advance? Would you have seen it before others, perhaps? Uh, I, I think it looks from this as, as though um, as, as though when I drafted this, uh, we had sight of the Chief Secretary's uh, note. Yes. So, you, I mean, it says here, there, the Chief Secretary's office has this evening circulated a note. Um, would this ministerial submission perhaps have been drafted earlier in the day and bits filled in, or do you think you actually urgently responded in the evening of the 21st of December? I, I think it's entirely possible that I responded that evening. Um, I, I do remember that around this time there were an awful lot of awfully late nights. And... Um, if we look at paragraph two, please. It says there, in bold and underlined, this is the outcome for which we fought for the last nine months, and you should strongly support the Chief Secretary's proposal. Uh, so clearly, in terms of the DTI position, as at 21st of December, it was fully in support uh, of that proposal. Yes. And can we go over the page, please, to paragraph 7? Now, we, we saw stage 2 um, mentioned in the Chief Secretary's document, and it says here, stage 2 has clearly been devised to try to make the package more palatable to DSS. At any level, much beyond that of a rather obvious face-saver, it seems unlikely to succeed. 
We, uh, what may also help, however, is that the argument has moved quite strongly against DSS and option three, termination of Horizon, rapid move to ACT, on two fronts in recent weeks. Um, can, can you tell us about the, um, where things had reached at that stage then, and which government departments uh, were, were supportive of the DTI at that stage? Um, I think we knew at that stage uh, that number 10 uh, was broadly supportive of moving in that direction, um, albeit with some reluctance um, in that uh, they saw it, we all saw it, as a less than optimum solution. And perhaps we can look at a letter to number 10, and that is CBO 0014001 underscore 053, please. This is just a couple of days later, a letter from Ian McCartney, who was then uh, Minister of State, to the Prime Minister. Um, is this a document, a letter that you would have drafted or been involved in the drafting of? Yes. I'm going to read the first two paragraphs. It says, I've become seriously concerned at our handling of the decision on the future of BA slash POCL counters automation project Horizon. The Christmas break is upon us, yet despite a series of meetings and several rounds of correspondence, a decision remains beyond our grasp. On Monday, Stephen Byers put forward a suggested compromise, that's I think the one we just saw, uh, that seemed to command a broad measure of support. Certainly, we in DTI would have been content to sign up to it. Yesterday, Alastair Darling submitted a counter-proposal, which essentially revisits an option we had already discarded, namely that of continuing with the Horizon infrastructure whilst dropping the benefit payment card and introducing early compulsory ACT. Uh, the next paragraph says, we should be clear that the smart card at the heart of Alistair's proposal has absolutely no direct role in the delivery of welfare benefits or in the early introduction of front-end banking at post office counters. Um, would it be fair to say that that was quite a, a tense period with the Treasury? And those are quite strong words. Um. I, I do remember drafting this um, uh, and feeling at the time, and, and I was absolutely not alone in this, um, that this kind of uh, paralysis that seemed to have been reached at ministerial level uh, was, um, was, was damaging everybody. Uh, and costing a lot of money and not moving anything uh, towards a, 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 an outcome uh, at all. And that uh, somehow this, this log jam uh, needed to be broken um, and that it was very disappointing that uh, uh, DSS, um, was was simply trying to loop the thing back into the in, in, into the same old arguments. Um, I think the sentence about we should be clear that the smart card has absolutely no direct role in the delivery of welfare benefits. Uh, I think that meant at that point in time, um, not that it wasn't the right way forward for the longer term. Um, but the system wasn't at that stage uh, ready for, for that. Uh, and we hadn't at all um, worked out how that was all going to be, how that was all going to be done. Um, the, the intention ha had been uh, from the DTI's um, uh, standpoint uh, was that it would be best to continue with the benefit payment card until such time 
as the technology had sort of caught up. Uh, and the benefit payment card could then be converted to have smart... I mean, not, not the card itself, because that was just a dumb card, but th that it could be replaced by a smart card which would do the same thing as the benefit payment card, plus a load of other things. Um, the 23rd of December 1998 is, is a significant date in that it was the date that Stephen Byers was appointed as Secretary of State at the DTI. Um, it's referring to the proposal he made whilst Chief Secretary to the Treasury. Are, are we to read anything into um, his appointment at the DTI in respect of Horizon and whether um, it was effectively a safe pair of hands in terms of the continuation of the Horizon project? Uh, I think you'd probably have to ask the Prime Minister that, uh, what, what is uh, uh, motivation in, 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 in moving his ministers around in the way that he did at, at, at that point in time. But was there a consistency of approach by his appointment? Well, uh, as it happens, yes, there was. Whether that was deliberate or not, uh, I, I, can't, I can't tell you. If we go over the page... I assume that this letter was written before the change in Secretary of State because it refers to... Um, yes, I believe, I believe it was, yes. And perhaps that... Is that a reason why it was sent from Ian McCartney at that time? Because perhaps the Secretary of State himself was moving? It, it might have been. I honestly don't remember. I'm going to read the first paragraph... Um, there. So it says, we simply cannot allow ourselves the luxury of continuing to avoid a decision by tabling each time some new variation on which to commission further work. The continuing delay and uncertainty is already causing serious damage and hardship. The 18,000 sub-postmasters who have collectively sunk £1 billion of their own money in the business are finding it increasingly difficult to sell their businesses uh, when they wish to retire or move on. The number of such offices remaining unsold on the market is unusually high. Reinforcing this, the number of net closures within the network, offices which have closed and for which the post office has been unable to find replacement sub-postmasters in the seven months since the beginning of April, is running at some 50% above the level of previous years. Most of them are those which, for social reasons, we least want to lose. The General Secretary of the National Federation of Subpostmasters is in no doubt that the largest single factor behind these depressing figures is the continued uncertainty about the future of the Horizon Project and the associated introduction of the BPC. Um, again, that's quite a, a bleak picture if Horizon isn't taken forward. Would you agree with that? Uh, I would say... A slight gloss on that. Um, it's a pretty depressing picture if nothing is decided. Uh, we want, we know what we wanted decided, but it was getting to the point where almost any decision that moved the thing forward um, would have avoided uh, this situation, which is spelt out here. Um, I think the level of frustration behind this that you can perhaps read into it. Um, what I, I may have written the words, but it was a widely shared sentiment um, at, at that point in time. But the next paragraph refers to concerns about uh, Fujitsu and, and Japan, and yes. that's something that I'm going to come on to. But certainly the picture that's being painted there um, for the Prime Minister is that things are going to um, be very bad if the Horizon Project isn't taken forward. If, uh, again, I would say if no decision is made. The decision we wanted, of course, was that Horizon should be taken forward for all the reasons that we've been spelling out for weeks and, 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 and months. But I think more than anything at this point in time was, um, for heaven's sake, can we not take a decision on moving forward. And then the paragraph after, I'm just going to read the first half of that paragraph, if we could scroll down slightly. 
The proposal in Stephen Byers' letter of the 21st of December is based on a long period of intensive commercial negotiations as well as a thorough technical appraisal. It offers both a way forward with the lowest technical and commercial risk and the best prospect of maintaining a financially viable nationwide network of post offices into the future. Uh, we again there see that, that reference to lowest technical risk. Um, there seems to be a theme in DTI correspondence over this period, um, which is at odds with um, some of the risks that were being presented in that uh, expert report that we saw this morning. Would you agree with that, or, or do you still maintain the position you had before lunch? Uh, um, uh, I, I still maintain um, uh, the, the position. Maybe the maybe the words uh, were not as well chosen as they they they, they might have been. Um, we believe at that stage uh, genuinely that the Horizon project, as outlined um, at this point in time, uh, was going to work and offered a, a better and more secure way forward than abandoning it and starting something completely new at this point in time. Um, moving to early 1999, it seems as though there are quite a few developments over Christmas and, and the early New Year. Can, can we look at CBO 0010001 underscore 039? Thank you very much. This is a letter from the Private Secretary to the Prime Minister. Um, it's addressed to Rod Clark, who I believe was at the DSS at that time. And it's dated the 14th of January, 1999. Do you recognize this letter? Or would you have seen this letter at the time? Uh, yeah, I would, have I would have seen it, yes. Um, there's a very bold header there that says, no further copies yes. should be made of this letter, and it should be made available only to other ministers and officials with a strict need to know of its contents. Is that unusual? I, I have not seen it uh, very often, if, if at all. Do you know why it would have been written? Um, I, I imagine uh, because um, some very sensitive negotiations were going on at the time. Um, and what was going on at a political level in the background uh, was perhaps best kept away from those commercial negotiations, I guess. And the Prime, Minister, um, the Prime Minister's position is set out there, and I'll just read those two points. It says, our key objective should be to develop the Horizon project by negotiating with ICL at the earliest possible move to smart cards. It will be extremely important to get the post office to take this negotiation seriously. But at the end of the day, if this negotiation does not succeed in improving upon the existing benefit card project, it would be better to accept this project than to pull out of negotiation with ICL completely with all the damage that could do. Were you aware at the time of why the Prime Minister um, was of that opinion? I, I think the Prime Minister was very well aware of the damage that pulling out of Horizon, pulling out of ICL, I, I, I think, uh, would do to ICL, to Fujitsu, to that sector of the UK uh, economy, uh, to the uh, the credibility of the, the PFI um, project, uh, as well as the political fallout from uh, sub-postmasters and people who like to use sub-post offices, uh, if something was leaked or, or um, made publicly available, which meant that they risked losing their village post office or their corner shop 
or, or, or whatever it is. I, I'm quite sure from uh, talking to people that the uh, demonstration, the march, that the National Federation of Sub-Postmasters um, organised back in about 1994, people were joining that not because they were so opposed to the idea of having their benefits paid into bank accounts, though a lot of them obviously were, but more because they were told that this would pose a very real threat to their village shop, uh, to their corner shop, and, 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 and so on. We see some more involvement from the Prime Minister on the 1st of March 1999. Can we look at that? Bayes 00000375. This, again, is a letter from the Principal Private Secretary. Um, would you have seen this at the time? Uh, well, at the time or very shortly thereafter, yes. And can we just scroll down slightly? This, this addresses what was then called Option 2A. Um, I think that was a benefit account um, that was only accessible at the post office plus a smart card option. Do you remember that at all? Uh, I, I confess that at this distance in time, um, uh, my recollection of exactly what the various options, I think at one point there was an option A, B1, B2, B3, C. Um, I, I, I don't remember the detail of them all. Are you... Are you aware of what the Prime Minister's position was around this time? Did he continue to be supportive of the overall project? I, I think he remained uh, supportive of not walking away from ICL. Um, in, in, in particular, and of finding some way uh, that satisfied the, the, the parties who were involved in, 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 in all of this and allowed the project to move forward uh, with, with ICL, I think, is the, is the key bit of that. How important was the Prime Minister's guidance, direction, decision, view? I would have taken it very seriously, certainly, yes. How important... Were you aware of, for example, the post office taking it seriously? Um, or I, were you aware of the post office even being aware of it? Well, not, not, not aware of this in terms, no. Um, you, you, you would have to, 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 to ask them, obviously, but... Uh, my recollection is that the post office were getting more and more fed up with this. Um, uh, they clearly, their position was differed from, from ours, if you like, in, in that what they wanted was to keep the benefit payment card. Um, uh, and uh, in, anything that, um, that took away from that in, increased, in their view, the risk to their customer base, uh, and that was obviously something they 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 didn't want to to see, um, and not just their customer base, but also the revenue that they got from the benefits agency for delivering those services. And to what extent were they influenced by uh, senior politicians? Um, the, 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 the Post Office Board um, was clearly made aware um, of our Secretary of State's thinking. Um, they were, they were also have been aware um, through uh, POCL's links with the Benefits Agency and through DSS and, and, and so on, um, where, where other ministers were. On, on all of this, um, and what the remaining risks were that it would all go against them still. But I think 
they shared the frustration. Um, the, the things had, had got stuck and they couldn't move them forward. Uh, uh, and you know, all, all the time, things were kind of drifting away from them. Um, I think even at the point that the project, as finally agreed, started to be rolled out, um, they may have got a bit more relaxed about it once it was once it was going, but but I remember sensing still quite a lot of residual bitterness, um, a feeling that that they had been shafted, if you like, um, and and hadn't got what they wanted. Uh, nobody had got exactly what they wanted. It was a compromise. Moving to April of 1999, can we look at Bayes 0000362, please? This is another ministerial submission that you wrote on the 16th of April, 1999. Can we look at paragraph two, please? I'll just read a little bit from there. It says, after the, an immense amount of effort by all the parties concerned over the past two or three days to refine and analyze the costings associated with option B, the smart card-based post office benefit account. So I think that was the option that at some stage I think was a 2A, um, the one that I mentioned before. Um, the inescapable conclusion is, looked at narrowly, this option is significantly more expensive than option A, the benefit payment card. And the con uh, just at the, end of, uh, at the end of that paragraph, the conclusion is scarcely surprising since option B involves paying ICL for the aborted benefit payment card and then paying on top of that for the development of the post office benefit account and for the smart card. Uh, this led the Treasury to produce at lunchtime today a draft report by officials for ministers concluding that option B is too expensive and should be rejected by ministers and that option A is undeliverable not for technical reasons, but because of the dysfunctional relationship between the contracting parties, and should also therefore be rejected. This leaves only termination, which should be accepted by ministers as the least bad of three thoroughly unattractive options. You say at the bot uh, bottom there on paragraph four, I said immediately that DTI officials could not be a party to such a conclusion. Um, again, there seems to be quite a, a divide in government on the way forward. Absolutely. And the DTI's position was is clearly set out there, um, that it certainly did not, um, wouldn't be a party to termination. Yes. And then if we go over the page, paragraph five, um, you make a number of points. The first is the Prime Minister's remit was to explore an alternative way forward to option A, not to introduce the already discarded option of termination. Uh, and if we could look at the very final bullet point. Finally, the history of option A is indeed one of dysfunctional relationships but tame acceptance that two public sector bodies would refuse to give effect to a clear collective decision by ministers is a sad basis for deciding on termination with all the damage that would do. Um, again, st strongly, st strongly worded. <laughs> yes, oh dear, I was upset. <laughs> uh, yes. I mean, ha have ministerial submissions become less strongly worded over the years or was this a particularly strongly worded ministerial submission? Um. Or maybe both. Uh, maybe maybe a, 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 a bit of both. Uh, again, the frustration that we're just going round the same loop again and not finding uh, a, a, a way through it. Um, nobody's disputing that, that some of these uh, arguments that are put on the other side uh, had validity. But um, at the end of the day, you were in a you were in a situation which which had generated some political imperatives, uh, and trying to pretend that they didn't exist or kicking against them, if you like, it was just wasting everybody's time. I'm going to move to May 
1999. And can we look at Bayes 0000275, please? Now, this is a note or a document of the 11th of May 1999. Um, it's from Catherine Hathaway. I believe she was a civil servant in your department. Is that right? Do you remember? I, I don't remember, actually. I'm sorry. Um, but I don't. Uh... In the first paragraph, it, it mentions a meeting with George Hall. Yes. Do you recall George Hall? I believe he worked at ICL. Yes. Um, this is a document that the inquiry has seen before. It was put to Keith Todd. Uh, and I'll just read to you... Um, the first paragraph under Horizon. Yes. It says, We spent the first 30 minutes discussing Horizon, during which George confirmed that he knew that ministers were split between cancelling the project and options B1, uh, option B1 version 2. He also knew exactly where the split lay, i.e. HMT, DSS versus the others. When asked how the deadline of the 23rd of April has, had been extended, he admitted it was only because ICL were fudging their financial reporting with potentially disastrous results as far as the directors were concerned. Um, can you offer us any insight into that at all? Uh, into what ICL were doing? No, I can't. Um, uh, do, do you remember this allegation being... Well, made? I know that um, uh, what, 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 they were doing everything in their power to keep the project alive. I also know, uh, I don't remember the details of it very well, um, that Fujitsu were looking to, um, to float Horizon, um, uh, to float, I'm sorry, uh, to uh, float ICL. Um, uh, uh, and and uh, obviously ICL were trying to make sure that nothing awful happened that would, that would kill that. The next paragraph, he confirmed that Keith Todd will lose his job should Horizon go down and that Fujitsu will divest themselves of ICL, which will be broken up and the services side will probably go to Siemens along with some other Fujitsu interests on the hardware side. Siemens are known to be interested in acquiring a services business and are already in discussion with Fujitsu. Did you see that as a genuine concern um, or, or a negotiating tactic of some sort regarding the future of ICL? Yeah. Um, ultimately, I think you know, that, is what, that is what could have happened. Um, I, I, I'm not saying that I thought at the time that this is, this is imminent, this is, this is what is going to happen. Um, but I certainly dis didn't discount it as if we carried on fudging this and making, a, making such a mess of it, um, that might well be where it all ended up. Um, and, and particularly so, particularly so, if we um, cut loose ICL from, from, from going forward with the, with the project. The next paragraph, he also said that he was personally hawkish about the legal situation and regarded DSS as having been utterly duplicitous. He suggested that ICL might accuse DSS of fraud, which I somehow doubt, actually. Indeed, he suggested that Horizon had been a great eye-opener for ICL as regards to how government did business and that ICL would think very hard about ever undertaking this kind of project again. I assume that this will become common knowledge around the industry eventually, and that PFI and IT areas will become even more difficult than it already is. Um, why were DSS seen as duplicitous? Are you able to uh, offer any insight into that? I appreciate they're not your words. Uh, I, I don't know what he, what he meant by that. Um, I can only guess that, that he may have meant that a lot of DSS's claims... Uh, were not well founded, um, and the DSS were attempting to achieve their objectives um, uh, using information that that wasn't really correct or wasn't proven or, or, or whatever. I don't know. This is quite a, a frank conversation with somebody from ICL. 
Um, did ICL see the DTI as being very much on their side? Yes. Yes, they did. And I had that from uh, a number of sources on a number of occasions, that they were grateful that we were, we were doing our best for them. And they knew that uh, we were fighting hard against a, a, a very determined uh, opposition. Uh, and I say it again, I have a great deal of sympathy with the benefits agencies um, uh, stance on, on on this it made perfect sense from from their point of view this is the 11th of may on the 24th of may um pockle and icl reach an in principle agreement uh, and i'm going to go to the 28th of may and that's bay 00000355 This is another submission from yourself. And this is um, a stage where a new working group was established. This is the 99 working group, I think, that you mentioned That's earlier. That's correct, yes. Can you tell us briefly why the working group was, that working group was set up? Uh, yes, I, I think it was to um, involve uh, parties who hadn't been directly involved in other um, discussions to bring them together, uh, mainly the groups of people, the NFSP and, and, and CWU and so on, uh, who were going to be using the equipment. Uh, we wanted to bring them in at that stage so that they had a sense of understanding where we were trying to get to and how we were trying to, uh, to get there. But equally importantly, we saw that group as being a very useful source of feedback as to how the rollout was actually going and whether problems were being quickly identified, uh, quickly reported back, quickly acted on, quickly resolved. This submission sets out four issues. Can we look at paragraph two? The first issue there, um, there are negotiations between Pockle and ICL that need to take place over the next two to three months to put in place the detailed contractual arrangement that will give effect to the outline agreement reached last weekend. Um, then the next paragraph outlines a second issue. If we could scroll down slightly. The second issue is to ensure that the remaining development phases of Horizon, including large-scale live trials, are completed without further slippage, and most crucially, that the rollout of the system following acceptance to all offices within the network is accomplished in a smooth and timely fashion. Uh, the CWU and NFSP members will be in the front line of the action during these phases, and both organizations have much to contribute to the successful completion of these phases. Um, it, it seems that the second issue is about um, prompt rollout of the system, no further slippage. Is that right? Uh, is that a, a fair description of that second issue? Yes, it, yes, it is. Over the page, please, to number four. This, this is the third issue. The third issue is how to maximize the commercial potential of the Horizon platform. And then number five sets out the fourth issue. The fourth issue is how Pockle is to be funded in the medium and longer term future once some 400 million pounds of revenue from BA uh, begin progressively to walk out through the door from 2003. And at the bottom of the page, it has the suggested terms of reference. And over the page, please. Um, there are the three points there. Uh, number one, to oversee the negotiations between Pockle and ICL, uh, which will develop the letter of agreement signed between the parties on the 24th of May into a codified agreement governing the contractual relationship under which the project will be taken forward and to facilitate solutions to any problems which may arise. Second, to oversee to 
contribute actively to and to facilitate solutions where problems arise, the, co the completion of the development phases of the Horizon project, and in particular, the smooth and timely rollout of the system to all offices within the post office network. And three, to contribute through ideas, contacts, and other practical measures to maximizing the commercial potential of the Horizon infrastructure, thereby to the future viability of the post office network as a whole. Um, it's right, is it right to say that this 1999 working group uh, wasn't a technical group uh, to analyze technical issues? No, not at all. No, not at all. Um, except that if issues arose in sub-post offices when they were trying to work the system for the first time, those issues would be identified and reported back. Whether they were technical issues or not, uh, I don't know, and, and probably the people who were, who, were, who were reporting them back wouldn't necessarily know. They would just know that something wasn't working properly. Um, I, I, looking at these words again, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I think if I was drafting it uh, today, which thank goodness I'm not, um, uh, rather than oversee, which implies some, some, some kind of control over it, as it were, uh, it, it, I think the concept was, was more to keep a very close eye on and to see whether there, there are thoughts or whatever that you can con contribute to the process uh, as, it, as it goes on. And who was expected to pass on through this group those kinds of issues? Um, who would you have expected to be contributing uh, within the group yes. uh, to problems with the completion and development? To be contributing within, within the group um, uh, I, I would have thought particularly the National Federation of Sub-Postmasters uh, because it's, it was primarily their members up and down the country operating 40,000 or whatever it was of these terminals um, who would be coming up with any problems that they were, that they were finding. I mean, they would know if something wasn't working properly. Uh, and... If it wasn't working properly, it needed to be reported upwards and it needed to be jumped on very, very quickly. In terms of significant technical reports to government, am I right in saying that it's the 1998 working group um, that was the significant report as far as that is concerned and that the, 19, sorry, the 1998 working group report and that the 1999 working group uh, was not looking at things at a technical level, but was, yes. um, as you say, receiving information from amongst other people, yes. the NFSP. Um, I, at this point in time, I'm not sure how, the, how much the original working group and its technical um, subgroup uh, were still actively involved in, in all of this. Um, my recollection, which may be quite wrong, is that they, they, they weren't or weren't to any uh, very great extent. I don't recall them as, 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 as being. What I would have expected is if some of these things that were being identified by sub-postmasters not working properly, um, they would have been as I say, reported up um, to uh, their bosses, uh, to help desks uh, or whatever. Um, and if necessary, they would have been escalated upwards, uh, benefits agents out of it at this, at this point, of course, um, through, uh, 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 through POCL, uh, through ICL, uh, and, and escalated to whatever level uh, was necessary to authorise whatever needed to be done to put it right. We see on this page the suggested membership. So we have there the DTI, yes. uh, POCL, Communications Workers Union, National Federation of Sub-Postmasters, 
ICL wouldn't formally be a member, but would be invited to attend meetings as appropriate. Um, is this group the, the core group for feeding back those kinds of concerns about that are arising during that rollout period? It was absolutely, um, it, it was intended to, to be uh, absolutely a primary channel for that purpose. It doesn't mean that it would be the only one, but yes, it would be a, a primary one, and it would be um, perhaps the, I was gonna say almost the only one that would be reporting, wh whose reports back would have gone to ministers. Can we look at NFSP 00000471, please? These are, this is a report of an NFSP meeting in June 1999. Would you have seen these reports at the time? Not at all, no. I've taken previous witnesses to these minutes, and I'm going to take you to the same pa couple of passages, at page 23, please. Uh, about halfway down on that page. Um, in fact, if we look at the page before, It'll make it clear at the bottom of that page, 9C, the discussion here is on counter automation BA slash POCL. And this is a meeting in June 1999. Um, if we go over the page, please, about three quarters of the way down, there's a paragraph, there was. There was general discussion on the severe difficulties being experienced by sub postmasters who are already running an automated system. Seven sheets of comments from the Northeast has been passed to Mr. David Miller. The difficulties and trauma being experienced by some sub postmasters were giving rise to concerns for their health and emotional well being. It was felt by some that a tragedy was not far away if something was not altered soon. The software was considered to be poor quality and not intended to run such a huge network. The system is based on Echo which was originally written for a network of 700, not 15,500. Um, over the page, please. About halfway down. It says, the General Secretary assured the meeting that Mr. David Miller had been informed of the difficulties in no uncertain terms. Over the page, again, we have the comments from Miss Linden. Miss Linden commented uh, that this seemed to be a typical post office counter situation and felt that ICL could not be blamed for the problems. And it says there, pointing out that it is now three years since the project was first mooted, which is a very long time in, techn in the technological world. She suggested that a different system be tried, smaller and less complicated, which would be of greater benefit to the smaller post offices and probably be a good deal cheaper and easier to operate. Uh, Pockle seemed to be attempting to build an audit system into the project, making the whole thing far too big, too cumbersome, and too complicated. Were you aware of these kinds of concerns at the time being raised in an FSP meeting? No, I read the pages that you've just referred to and several of the pages that follow it, uh, and I was absolutely horrified. I thought it was unbelievable. Um, that with this level of concern at this stage in the rollout, this very early stage, the rollout of the project, that something was not done about it. Um, go going on a few pages from here, uh, there's the report of a meeting that I attended. Um, Perhaps we could go to, is it page 27 at the bottom? Um, yeah. So do carry on. It, it may, I, I may be pointing to the, to the wrong part. Um. Th there, was, there was a bit where the, right. where the, the minister was reported um, as saying, well, the, the implication is, I don't care what's the matter with it, this thing's got to go ahead and there should be no slippage. Uh, I don't recollect at all the minister saying that sort of thing in those terms. Um, this is very, very stark. Um, uh, and 
absolutely not what 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 we would have wanted to see. I know there was pressure to to get the rollout uh, going and and even accelerating, but I can't. I, I find it difficult to believe that this is something that we would have, as a department, as a government, we would have countenanced um, just turning a blind eye and saying, get on, get on with it. Um, uh, it. It didn't come out, I think, in the meeting, um, anything like as starkly as it did in the paragraphs to which you, you referred just now and some of the paragraphs uh, around it which make absolutely terrifying reading, really. So the meeting that you attended, which I think is at the bottom of page 27... Yes. <clears throat> ..that was a meeting with Mr Pebbody um, and the General Secretary. Um, you weren't present at the larger meeting, which is uh, the sub subject of this report, is that right? No, no, no. I, I was present uh, at the meeting of the working group. Yes. Not, not, not anything else. And the kinds of concerns that we have heard in this report, were those kinds of concerns in, in any way brought to your attention by Mr Pebbody um, at that meeting on the 22nd of June? Uh, I, I don't think that we... I'm not saying he was trying to hide anything or, or not say that there, were, that there weren't problems, but I, I don't ever remember getting from anyone anything with the flavour of those earlier paragraphs, which are really at the beginning of something that you're now going to multiply by a hundred and a thousand and ten thousand and so on. Um, and, just, and just leave it. And, and you've said that the Horizon Working Group 1999 was, yes. was the forum to raise those kinds of issues. Uh, it, was, it was a forum to raise these sorts of things. Obviously not the only one. Obviously if you've got a problem, you report it to your supervisor uh, or you report it to a help desk or, or whatever, or whatever. But this was certainly a channel for feeding back uh, Th those kinds of uh, discoveries, if you like, that these the, the, these reactions, and it was the one channel um, I would have said uh, that has direct access to a minister. We we've seen who was at that NFSP meeting, uh, and we've heard and uh, read that comments were fed back to David Miller of. Pockle, um, who should have been passing on those messages to government or to or through the Horizon Working Group? Um, it, 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 it should have come out, in my view, much more starkly at the meeting of that working group uh, than, it, than it did. Uh, I don't think, I don't recall... Um, uh, and I don't think the minutes, minutes really bring out um, that anything that was put to the group in quite those stark terms. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I, I don't recall. I don't recall that. I, I know things were raised, and yes, we're going to talk to the post office about it, and and so on. Not nothing like. Um, this is awful. If this isn't resolved, this is an absolute showstopper. You know, we can't roll the thing out like this to all those poor sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses uh, uh, around the country and, and have them having nervous breakdowns and what have you because they can't make the system work. And who should have been shouting that message? Well... The representatives, in particular, um, of the National Federation of Sub Postmasters. I'm not. I'm not saying they they, they weren't doing their their job. Um, uh, I think. Uh, I mean, they must answer for themselves. Um, and uh, I, I knew them very well, and they were good people. Um, but they 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 too needed to see 
the system rolled out and, and, and working. And I guess they thought, well, we don't necessarily want to start ringing alarm bells uh, too loudly um, in case it generates pressure to stop the project or, or, or whatever it is. Um, you know, these are concerns. They must be raised with the post office. Uh, they, they, they must be sorted. But let's not overreact. Let's not let's, let's not frighten everybody. Moving. Uh, that's what I think. I, I, I mean, you, you, you have to ask them about it. But you've got the, the the two documents there. You've got the the one which records what's being said about. Um, the awful situation which some sub-postmasters were finding themselves in, um, and then you've got the, the minutes of the meeting, which I suggest don't quite reflect fully the flavour of, of, of that. Um, moving to July of 1999, can we look at Bay 0000236, please? This is an, another ministerial submission from yourself. Can we scroll down, please? Thank you. Um, the detailed agreement between Post Office Counters Limited and ICL for taking forward the restructured Horizon project was signed by the parties this morning. And over the page, please, to paragraph five. Um, after a slow and resentful start, Pockle have, I think, surprised themselves at the progress that they've been able to make with ICL, both in contractual discussions and in resolving a large number of outstanding technical issues. It is very early days yet, and at risk of accusations of wishful thinking, I nevertheless detect in, these early, in this early progress perhaps some vindication of Minister's decision to simplify the contractual relationship by taking the benefits agency out of the frame and to simplify the technical content of the project by removing the benefit payments card. Were you feeling, would it be fair to say that you were cautiously optimistic at that stage? Yes, I was. Um, and I, I think uh, what I was um, particularly uh, optimistic about was that um, what caused the original Horizon project, if I can call it that, to fail uh, more than anything, I think, was that the benefits agency and Pockle, not attaching blame to either side, uh, just couldn't get on. Um, and ICL, who probably had their faults as well, um, were stuck in the middle of, of this. And it, 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 I think it was probably more than anything uh, that that caused the delays uh, and eventually the sort of collapse of Horizon Mark One, if I can call it that. Paragraph six, it says, by the same token, however, if Pockle are at least beginning to lift themselves out of the depression into which they sank as a result of the decision to allow BA to move to ACT from 2003, it will now be very important to them for ministers to reach a compromise that at least gives them some modest gains over what is currently on offer in their negotiations with BA. And bit further down, uh, they have a mountain to climb if the hugely ambitious program for rollout of the system to 40,000 counter positions and nearly 19,000 offices is to be completed on schedule, and if they are to drive forward in a positive and optimistic spirit the search for new business to help plug the £400 million a year hole in their finances that the loss of BA revenue will create. A positive sign for ministers now stands to produce benefits well beyond its modest cost a negative sign could not fail to damage the healing process. Uh, I think the state of depression is something that you mentioned earlier. Can, can, can you give us a <laughs> flavour of that, please? Oh. I, I, I just think um, that at the end of all these negotiations, and before they'd actually got anything on the ground to show for it, um, uh, Pockle felt that they'd been shafted. Um, they felt that they'd been kind of cut adrift uh, uh, with no benefit payment card, 
um, and a system that they didn't know what they could do with. Uh, the the negotiations with uh, ICL for Horizon Mark One um, had been so fractious and and unproductive uh, that they probably feared that the same thing might happen uh, with Horizon Mark II. Um, but I think they, 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 they found, or at least the people who were dealing with uh, ICL found, that um, when it was just a one-on-one -on -one and there wasn't this um, ridiculous sort of triangular uh, relationship, uh, that they could actually make progress and get things done. And I think they started to feel an awful lot more cheerful. Um, that was the sense that I got from the people that I spoke to, but perhaps I was speaking to the wrong people. Well, uh, we've seen an ICL monthly report. I'm not going to take you to it. I think you've been provided with it recently. It's reference for the purpose of the transcript is FUJ 00058183. Um, that's a report of June of 1999. And it says that Pockle continued to remain negative and critical towards the programme and hadn't got over their bitterness in the way that, in which they had been treated by the public sector, and that they held ICL partly responsible. Is that something you would agree with? Um, uh, well, it's, it, it, it's obviously uh, somebody's interpretation of, of what they feel the, med the mood in in, 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 in Pockle to be, um, I, you know, I, I, I've said that, that there was a great deal of bitterness around the start of the rollout programme. I was certainly aware of that. Um, but the cloud seemed to be lifting. Um, it, it seemed to be looking an awful lot more positive. Uh, but Did you sense any mistrust between the post office and ICL at that stage? Uh, no, I don't think I, I did. I, I think probably um, uh, Pockle, as the thing went along, um, were, were kind of half expecting nasty surprises um, because of the bad experience that they had before. Um, but I thought, uh, and, and uh, after the end of, or towards the end of, uh, of, of 2000, um, I, I, I wasn't there anymore, I'd, I, I'd retired, so I, I don't know how it progressed after that point. But uh, when I left it, um, I thought there was a greater sense of optimism than there had been uh, up until that point. The second half of this paragraph describes the rollout as hugely ambitious. Do you think it was too ambitious in respect of its time frame, for example? I'm sorry, what, what are we looking at? Um, so they have a mountain to climb if the hugely ambitious programme for rollout of the system to 40,000 counter positions in nearly 19,000 offices is to be completed yep. on schedule. Yeah. Um, looking back at it, or perhaps even your view at the time, um, do you or did you consider that it was too optimistic uh, and perhaps rushed? Um, I remember thinking that, that, that this was a huge program to, to try to, to manage, to, to, you know, to get 40,000 terminals in and working and the people trained to use it properly and the help desk set up and in place and all that. Um, yes, enormously ambitious. Um, I, I don't think I had a, a sense that, oh, this can't possibly work, can it? Um, but just sort of looking with some awe at what they were um, planning to achieve. The Benefits Agency had pulled out it in May of 1999. Uh, the plan was to, to roll out pretty soon. Um, do you think the time period that was left for, for example, all of that testing that you talked about at the very beginning of today, do you think there was sufficient time for all of that? Uh, I suppose do, or, do I or did I? Um, I don't know. I don't know at the time how conscious I was um, of, of, of all of that. Um, 
looking at it now, um, my, my understanding is that uh, once they had ripped the guts out of Horizon, that is the removal of the benefit payment card part of the technology, uh, the amount of uh, testing that was done thereafter to see whether the residual bits were working properly, um, there was very little time. I'm not saying that the testing wasn't, wasn't adequate. Um, there was very little time, and I wonder whether there was enough time for all of the testing that should have been done, could have been done, would have been desirable to do, um, was actually done. But it's very easy, always, in these circumstances, to say, well, in an ideal world, we would have spent another six months testing this. But... It wasn't. It was a, a, a somewhat less than optimum world, if you like, that they were trying to do all of this in. We know from this morning that in 1998 there was this look in, thorough look into the viability of the Horizon system. Uh, do you think that that summer of 1999 would have been an appropriate time to have carried out uh, another government look at the viability? The, the, Reliability this time. Of the um, yeah, per, per, in retrospect, perhaps it perhaps it would. Um, I don't know what the technical experts would have felt at the time. Whether it was worth going back and having an, a, 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 another sort of look at the roots, as it were, to see how to see how they were uh, th they were growing. Um, clearly, by the time it was rolled out, quite a lot of time had elapsed. Um, and uh, we know that in that time, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't visible to us, but we, we knew that work was continuing, even though ICL had been put in breach back in the, the November or whatever it was, um, and they must have known that that was coming down the road at them anyway. Uh, my understanding is that they carried on working um, and carried on with uh, with, with with developments um, in the hope certainly uh, that when ministers finally um, uh, I was going to say got their act together that sounds terribly patronising I don't mean that um, uh, that that once decisions had been reached uh, they would be that much further forward and and be able to uh, to move the thing on everyone I think was conscious uh, of, of time in, in, in all of this. The Benefits Agency, very conscious that until something was sorted, the losses from fraud from the paper-based system would continue unabated. So, you know, th they too needed this thing to be, to be settled. Um, can we look at a document from August 1999, that's Bay 00001119, please. Um, this is lines to take that have been prepared for a meeting with Derek Hodgson. Um, do you recall this document or the background to this at all? Uh, I, I, I think I probably do, yes. It doesn't matter so much because I'm only really going to take you to the background section. Yeah. But so if there's anything that you recall from what I was just going to say about about what, what's on the screen at, at, at the moment, um, in two respects, the system was not yet suitable for acceptance and declined to do so. Um, what we understood that there were uh, two screen freezes and something. So at perhaps the, we at could the scroll down. Actually, okay, that's right. where the two problem areas are highlighted. It says the two problem areas which led Pockle to refuse acceptance on the 18th of August are some connection difficulties resulting in a small number of counter transactions not being properly recorded in the back end systems and be higher than expected incidents of screen freeze. ICL confident uh, that these are just glitches for which they have an effective fix. 
Poch will want a demonstration of this by two to three weeks clear running before accepting the system because acceptance triggers a significant payout, payout to ICL, £68 million. Pounds. Um, where would that information have come from, do you know? I think we would have been we would have been told of that by the post office. I, I assume. I don't know. And is, is that the kind of technical detail that you would be provided with at that stage? That limited detail, or, or do you think? Uh, I don't think we would have been provided with that sort of level of detail at all, if it hadn't suddenly um, cropped up as a potentially serious means of, of delay to the uh, to the program in the event it in the event it wasn't and Pockle uh, apparently had satisfied themselves that the patches that had been put in place uh, were were good and were holding uh, and so they, they went ahead with it but no we wouldn't normally have have, uh, have had sight of that level of detail if it hadn't been for the context. Uh, of it. I believe there was something else around at the time um, uh, concerning help desks that had to be had to be resolved as well that, that Pockle were unhappy about. But other than that, at that point in time, we had no reason to believe that Pockle were anything and, and ICL were anything other than satisfied that the system was in a sufficiently good shape for it to be rolled, to be rolled out. Um, you, you've mentioned the help desk. Perhaps I can take you to another document that, that oh. shows that. That's Bay 0000111. Oh, sorry. Um, Bay 0000264. Um, yeah. This is just a, a, um, the, a front sheet. In fact, it's the next, the annex to that that I'd like to take you to, but that has a, a separate document reference number. That is Bay 0000265. And, and these are points to make. Um, it's a, um, for a meeting between Patricia Hewitt and ICL on the 2nd of November 1999. Um, and it says that I was pleased to hear that the post office formally accepted the Horizon Automation System on the 24th of September although I understand this was delayed by one month. And if we look over the page, it has some background there. Um, formal acceptance of the reconfiguration, reconfigured horizon system planned for the 18th of August was postponed because the post office counters concerns about training, system stability, data integrity, there had been an unacceptably high level of screen freezes, and the effective operation of the help desk. The post office accepted the system on the 24th of September on the basis that effective remedial action had either been completed or was in hand. Currently, 950 post offices are automated, and the post office expects that this will rise to 1,800 before Christmas. The post office is committed to achieving rollout of the system by March 2001 at the rate of 300 offices per week. So again, there, there there's mention in very summary form of, of the kinds of issues that are being experienced on the horizon system. Um, having seen those NFSP uh, meeting minutes, for example, um, do you feel that at that time, so August, September, October of 1999, that you were being provided with, with a frank assessment of the rollout success or otherwise? I have no reason to believe that the post office, that Pockle, um, would have wanted to um, cover up uh, any problems that there were. Uh, I can't believe that they would have wanted to sign a cheque for £68 million pounds or whatever it was um, for, for the system. Um, if they weren't satisfied, uh, well, in, in the words here, that effective remedial action had either been completed or was in hand. Uh, I, I think, again, I, I, I've said before, um, a system of this size and this complexity was bound to have 
teething problems showing up. Um, and the issue was, how quickly can you jump on these? How quickly can you resolve them um, and, and, and put corrections in, in, in place? Um, I don't know what the answer to that was because, as I say, I wasn't there for very long after that. But do you think at that time you were being provided with sufficient information about how it was going? Uh, I don't think we would have been provided with a lot of detailed information at, at, at all. Uh, we would have been provided with information about the, the bigger issues um, and told when they were and told when they had been resolved. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure uh, how much of this also came up through uh, the, the Horizon Group 99. I'm going to take you to one more document before we have a short break. Um, and then I've just got some um, individual issues to take you to that shouldn't last too long. Um, but let's look at this further document. It's Bay 0000478. Um, you produced some briefings and lines to take in autumn of 1999. Um, I think a, a few different ones have been provided to you in advance of today. Um, but it's this one that I will take you to. Um, these are lines to take in respect to the Trade and Industry Select Committee report. Do you remember in summary, what that report said, or what that report was about? Um, I don't remember that particular document. Um, Perhaps we could scroll uh, down slightly. Yeah, I think this was, I mean, this was just, just lines to take on what the select committee had, had reported yes. uh, on. Um, Perhaps if we, if we keep on scrolling, we can yes. see where it goes to the Q&A yes. brief. And over the page, please. Yep. Um, it addresses on page five. Right. About halfway down. The, the, these are simply, I think, press lines or lines to take. I think the... In fact, the covering document said to Ms. Madsen News, so presumably that's the news desk of the DTI, is yes. it? Yes. And, and it says they're given the failures of this project, why didn't the government just terminate and find another supplier? Uh, and the line to take there is the government is satisfied that the agreement has put in the project back on track. This will deliver a modern online IT platform to some 40,000 counter positions in more than 18,000 post offices and represents the best value for money for the taxpayer. Um, there are lots, if, if we keep on scrolling, there are lots of subjects, but technical robustness is only addressed at page 13. And over to page 13, please, thank you. And it's the second point there. It says, IT consultants appointed by the government's review found the system to be technically robust and deliverable, question mark. So this is a point that, an anticipated point that somebody may yes. put to the DTI. Yes. And the response is, they also found that its deliverability was dependent on a number of other factors. Given the possibility of further delays with the project and the lack of assurances on cost and timetable, the government decided that a restructuring of the project had become essential. Um, that reference there to IT consultants having found the system to be technically robust and deliverable, um, that seems again to be a reference back to the 1998 report and the DTI's interpretation of that report. I, I, I think it must have been uh, earlier than that. I, I think what, my, my recollection is that uh, the original Horizon, Horizon Mark One, if you like, um, uh, which was which was close to completion, although it wasn't allowed to, to to go ahead and get properly completed. The technical experts looked at that and and and, and said, 
um, in effect. If this had been allowed to go ahead, we think it would have worked and worked well, is, is my recollection. So you don't think that that is a, a reference to, for example, the PA consulting report back in 1998 that fed into the Horizon Working Group report? Um, I, I don't think specifically it was the, a PA report, no. no. Uh, um, I mean, very, at that stage, various people were looking at, 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 various, uh, at various things. Um, what there hadn't been by this stage, though, uh, so 1999, yep. was an up-to-date um, consultant report that found the system as then being rolled out uh, to be technically robust and deliverable. I agree with that. Yes, that's true. Do you think that that was a, perhaps a miss opp missed opportunity? It, it might have been. Um, uh, I, I'm sure that the reason for it uh, was the pressure now to simply get this thing on the road and going. Um, uh, in retrospect, uh, it, it's possible to say that if there had been more time, things could have been done differently and perhaps better. But at the time and in the circumstances, that was the way uh, that it was handled. Um, as I say, possibly less than optimum, but it was always um, the, the, the time pressure. And this is not just the the time pressure from the, the post office or or the DTI. It was a time pressure from everybody. You know, the benefits agency wanted the thing moved forward so that they could get closer to the point when uh, they could um, plug the leak uh, of, of uh, fraudulent money disappearing from the system that they had to uh, account for. So, so everybody wanted a solution. Thank you very much. Sir, I think that's a convenient moment to take perhaps a 10-minute break. Yeah, by all means. Thank you very much. So what's that? Uh, what time will that be? Um, 25 past 3? Yes, thank you very much. Fine, thank you.
Hello, sir. Hey there. Mr. Sibick, I'm going to ask you about a few discrete issues. I, I shouldn't be very long. I, I can't imagine I'll be longer than half an hour. Yes, as far as I'm concerned, uh, as long as you need. Thank you. Um, the first one is, is Japan. Um, there are many documents that you've been provided that address the relations with Fujitsu and wider relations, commercial relations. Um, for the record, for example, they include Bayes 0000127, Bayes 0000281, Bayes 0000127, Bayes 0000421. Uh, those are all from September and October 1998. Um, I'm going to start with December of 1998. Uh, and can we look at Bayes 0000336, please? There is Bayes 0000334, which is just a, a covering telegram, and I won't look, I'll skip over that. Oh. Do, do you remember seeing this, at least in preparation? If not, um, we can take a bit more time over it. it it's a telegram yeah. um, from Tokyo, from the British Embassy. It may assist, uh, sorry, could, could we go to base 0000334, please? So this is from Isabel Anderson, who I believe worked for you or with you. At yeah, with, with me, yes, yes. And I think you are, yes, you're copied in there. And this is attaching um, certain documents, including a note of a meeting between Sir David Wright, ambassador in Japan, and Mr. Naruto, vice chairman of Fujitsu and chairman of ICL UK. Um, and Mr. Sakai, Senior Vice President of Fujitsu, and Mr. Yurini, Director of ICL UK. And then perhaps if we could go to 336. This is the note, this is the telegram itself. Um, I don't need to go into great detail of this particular document. Um, perhaps we can just look at paragraph three you have there Mr. Naruto stressing the difficult and serious crisis that Horizon faced at that time. So that's December 1998. And they were worried that HMG didn't fully understand the seriousness of the situation. And perhaps at the bottom of the page, we have Mr. Naruto fearing for Fujitsu's domestic reputation if the project failed. Um, and he repeatedly stressed that the failure of the project will have serious repercussions for, Jitsu, for Fujitsu's international standing. And perhaps we can go down to the conclusion. The contents of the letter and the tone of Naruto's approach make it quite clear uh, that we have a major and potentially damaging problem on our hands. And next paragraph, paragraph eight, failure of project horizon and of ICL's role in it would also have a knock a hole in the credit we get here for PFI slash PPP initiatives. The Fujitsu slash ICL role in Project Horizon has been seen as a template for high-level political study here of this approach to large-scale public projects. Um, paragraph 9, it continues, any threats to ICL's continued viability would have profound implications for jobs in the UK and bilateral ties. Um, could we go to... Bay 0000278. This is a, another telegram from the British Embassy, the 25th of January 1999, so um, moving on slightly. And this is, um, if we look at paragraph one. Um, at his request, Keith Todd, chief executive of ICL, called me, and um, that's the ambassador, on 23rd of May, 
Uh, after talks with the Fujitsu president, he expressed Fujitsu's, quote, complete disbelief and lack of understanding at HMG's decision-making process, unquote. Uh, that telegram continues in a similar theme. Can we look at Bay 0000315, please? This is a, a briefing for the Secretary of State on the 4th of June, 1999. So quite a bit on. And if we go over the page, and over the page again to the background, it sets out that there was a meeting on the 14th of May against the background of negotiations which have been taking place between HMG and ICL, uh, led by HM Treasury on a compromise solution. Um, and it sets out there that in paragraph two that Mr. Sekizawa stressed that unless an unconditional agreement could be signed by the 17th of May, Fujitsu would have to accept a 306 million provision in their consolidated group accounts. If that happened, he would find it very difficult to justify to shareholders and analysts any course of action other than to walk away from the project and seek to recover the 300 million pound development costs already incurred. Paragraph three, later that evening, Steve Robson wrote to ICL with a counter proposal um, requiring ICL to accept a loss estimated by ICL to be 250 million pounds. Uh, there's no doubt that when news of this offer reached Mr. Se Sekizawa and Mr. Narutu on their arrival in Japan, there were strong feelings that the company had been betrayed by the British government. Um, in these tense negotiations over the coming days, we know that it was your letter to Keith Todd of the 21st of May confirming the government's wish to proceed with the project and later the personal appeal to Mr. Narutu by the deputy ambassador on your behalf that persuaded Fujitsu not to abandon uh, negotiations. Can you tell us uh, over this period how significant it was um, that the, uh, and how much pressure there was uh, to maintain this relationship with ICL and not to damage ties with Fujitsu? Um, I think it was from the very beginning uh, seen within the DTI uh, as very important indeed that it would have been a major blow, uh, as I think I've already uh, described, um, to the whole PFI concept, if a project of this importance and this stature, if you like, uh, failed. Um, but it was, it was, however important that was, that was only one element uh, in our consideration. The, the other was the damage to the network of post offices up and down the country if the thing failed. So, so we had these, these twin objectives, uh, as it were, uh, to keep on um, trying to press ministers uh, into a solution that, that dealt with these these two issues, and I think it was the combination of, of them, the industrial one and the purely political one, the sub-postmasters and the network and so on, um, that, that, that in the end, the force of those arguments, I would say that, wouldn't I, but, but the, the force of those uh, arguments were, were what prevailed. Um, uh, and uh, We see a paragraph two, um, the um, chairman of Fujitsu stressing that an unconditional agreement needed to be signed by the 17th of May uh, and negotiations thereafter concerning the, the date uh, and May was seen as particularly important, May of 2000. Um, sorry, May of 1999. Um, I mean, can you tell us how much time pressure there was coming from the Fujitsu end? To uh, get quite, a, uh, qu quite a lot. Um, as, as, we as we understood it, um, there was a lot of uh, pressure on them to get this uh, sorted out um, so that they could 
um, uh, sign off their accounts, as I understand it, for 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 that year, um, and a lot hinged on, on this as to whether Fujitsu would have no alternative but to kind of uh, just cut ICL loose, disband it, whatever they were going to uh, to do with it, and and we understood that there were genuine absolutely genuine time pressures there. And this wasn't just uh, Fujitsu uh, trying to scare us or, 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 or whatever. Um, we believed that, that, that it was real, um, rightly or wrongly. I think it was real. A uh, second topic I'd like to ask you about it is simply the financial success or otherwise of ICL. And can we look at Bayes 0000255, please? This is a submission to Sir Michael Scholar on the 14th of July 2000, and it relates to a draft NAO National Audit Office report on the cancellation of the benefits card project. So it's a draft of that report that had been received by that date. Can we look at page four of that submission, please? And it's paragraph eight that I'd like to ask you about. Right. It says, given how badly wrong the project went from almost day one, the National Audit Office report could hardly fail to make uncomfortable reading to a greater or lesser extent for each of the key players. Within this, however, our objective has been to secure a report which focuses in a positive way on the lessons to be learned from the project and which, without pulling punches, at least avoids unnecessary criticism that could gratuitously damage the commercial prospects of either ICL and through them our relations with their parent, Fujitsu, or of Pockel. Um, how important was avoiding damage to the commercial prospects of ICL and Fujitsu, um, even at this stage after, um, after the rollout had taken place and, and the contracts had all been signed? Um, I, I, think it, I think it was important in the sense that um, ICL needed to be a, a, a healthy partner going Going forward on 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 <coughs> all this, um, you know, we we weren't there to to make uh, ICL rich or anything like that, but we, we did need them to be financially viable, so that they could take this project forward. Uh, they could uh, they they would have money to spend on development, further development of the of the project that was going to be um, e essential if it was to survive more than a, a few years without completely running into the uh, in, into the sand. So, so yes, we, we did want to see uh, ICL financially healthy. Can we look at Bayes 0000253, please? This is again, this is 31st of July 2000, so again, long after the contracts had been signed and rollout had commenced. This is a submission from yourself to the Secretary of State. Yep. And it's about the timing of the publication of the NAO report. And I just want to look at the second half of paragraph one, please. It says, ICL wanted early publication to minimise the adverse effect on their planned flotation in the autumn of a report which shows the company's performance on the Horizon project is in less than a flattering light. Do you think that by that stage, um, the DTI had become too close to ICL? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, there are two to the, the, there was a part of the DTI, not the part that I was in, that was responsible for sponsoring uh, the electronic sector or what, 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 whatever it was called. Um, I didn't have the sense that, that they were necessarily 
uh, too close to uh, to ICL. Um, uh, I certainly wasn't. I, I, I spoke to them periodically. I knew some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the senior people there, but uh, no, I don't think we were too. Cl I don't think that we were too close to them uh, at all. Uh, I think we had a, a genuine interest in seeing ICL as a healthy company in a very important sector of our economy. Do you think that it would be right for the DTI um, to be concerned about the timing of a publication uh, to minimise the effect on ICL's planned flotation, for example? Um, if it was something that was going to happen anyway, and you could do it at a certain time rather than another time, um, and that would be helpful to one of the partners of a huge project, um, why wouldn't you do that? You know, why would you go out of your way to be unhelpful um, if you could do the, uh, the reverse? Thank you very much. The next subject I'd like to ask you about is PFI. So a uh, paragraph uh, 33 of your statement, and I think you've also mentioned it already today, um, you said that the DTI avoided the loss of a major player in the electronics sector, the risk of future investment prospects, and the damage to the PFI brand. Uh, and then at paragraph 34 of your statement, you refer again to damage to the image of the UK's PFI initiative. How important was the PFI brand? Um... It was something to which the government uh, attached quite a lot of importance. Um, it was uh, Adrian Montague's, I can say baby, he, 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 was, he was sort of in charge of, uh, of, of, of promoting that. I think it was just something that, that the UK had, had kind of come up with and a lot of other um, administrations were interested in that as a way of helping to uh, finance public sector projects uh, and people who were looking to us and saying wow aren't you clever this is a wonderful way of doing things um, would have uh, well we wouldn't have wanted then to see the thing suddenly collapse and say not such a good way after all perhaps are you aware of any complications that PFI may have imposed in the project itself, such as um, problems with the sharing of information between Fujitsu and the post office? I, I'm, I'm personally not aware of that, no. Um, I'm going to move on to prosecutions. Um, to what extent were you aware of any consideration being given to the use of Horizon for prosecutions, or Horizon data for prosecutions? I was not aware of that at all. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Sibbick, is there anything else that you'd like to add that may assist the chair or, or that you would like to say? Um, a, a, a number of things, I, I suppose, if I can kind of order them a bit. Um, the, first, the first is, um, we, with the benefit of hindsight, we can all be geniuses, and uh, we wouldn't have necessarily done things in the way that we did uh, had, we, had we had wider sight or wider knowledge, as it were. Um, perhaps the second thing that I would say is that you will see that I've put a, a lot of submissions, a lot of advice to ministers over this period. Ministers I've been fortunate enough to work for have been pretty bright people, more than capable of making up their own minds on things. We tried to give them the facts. Uh, they could accept what I was suggesting that they should do, what the action should be, but they were clearly under no obligation whatsoever to, to accept that. If they thought I was wrong, um, they would have said so. They would have had no hesitation in, 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 in saying so. Um, 
The third thing, perhaps, if I may, is that I don't think any of the parties to, to this um, were acting in bad faith. Uh, I think they were promoting vigorously their own vested, I'm sure, their own interests, uh, which was what they were there, what they were there to do. Um, and I think all of them genuine, genuinely believed uh, what they were saying. I, I've said um, several times that what the benefits agency wanted, what DSS wanted, on their terms, made absolute sense. It was the, the right thing to do. And in a wider sense, um, it was also the right thing to do. Um, it, it just so happened that there were some arguments on the other side that were also very persuasive, and which in the end more or less prevailed. Um, perhaps a final thought, I don't know if it's a final one, but um, another thought um, is that everybody acted, this, this, this was a huge, complicated project. It was, um, to a large extent, treading ground that hadn't been trodden before. Um, uh, it, it would have been wrong to expect perfection first time round. You know, it, was ne it was never going to be uh, like that. And then, when it went wrong initially, various stakes had already been put in the ground. You know, we had a contract with, with ICL. Um, it, it was a, a highly publicized contract, um, the Horizon uh, project. Um, and you couldn't, you couldn't undo that. You, you couldn't sort of unsee that. Uh, so there was a compulsion to say, OK, that, that, that's there. We, it, it would be pretty awful just to, to sort of abandon it. We perhaps don't have that luxury. Um, we need to take it forward. We need to find some way of, of taking it forward. I don't think at the end of this anybody got exactly what they wanted. It was a compromise uh, and a very difficult compromise to, 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 to reach. Um, uh, I was very pleased to play some small part in, in, in all of that. Um, I'm so, so sorry that it turned out badly in the end for so many people. And I just wish your inquiry every success in getting to the bottom of this and above all in making sure that nothing like this could, could ever happen uh, again. Thank you very much, Mr. Civic. Uh, sir, do you have any questions at all? No, I don't, thank you. And do I take it, uh, Mr. Blake, that you've asked all the questions in this instance that this witness is to be asked? Yes, I have. Thank you. Well, I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Civic, for coming to give evidence before the inquiry. I'm sorry that I caused a slight delay this morning, which I hope didn't inconvenience you too much. Uh, and um, thanks again for attending. Thank you very much, sir. So 10 o'clock tomorrow, uh, Mr. Blake? Yes, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much.